In February, I became a team lead. And I will say this has helped me, especially the Google Summer of Code, the team lead stuff happening has been awesome because I've learned a lot about running a team of developers and being supportive, but still holding to certain, like, we need this, like, this is not questionable right now. Um, you learn to phrase things in really flowery ways. This is an awesome, awesome patch. How would you feel about writing some tests for it? Let me give you an example. Here's a test that looks a lot like the test of what you would need for your bit of code. And so that requires, so a lot of the time I spent in Bookie while the Google Summer of Code stuff was going on, I didn't write a line of code, right? <laughs> like, it was everything I could do to go through the six to 10 pull requests every night and review them, run code reviews, comment, this looks good, this is that, this should really might be better over here, I see what you're trying to do here, here's some recommendations, you know, and you want to do it in, as an enabling and non-condescending, constructive way as possible, right? Because at the end of the day, I want this branch to land, right? This is 50 lines of code I did not have to write. You know, that, I mean, having, this is something I wanted when I first started Bookie. I wanted to have tag suggestions, right? Computers are smart. They can be able to figure some of this stuff out, you know? When the Google Summer of Code student wrote this, it was a big chunk of work. It needed a lot of review and cleanup and stuff, but like, man, I want it. And he worked hard. He went through several iterations. He used three different libraries to try to pull out what the important text was. Like, you know, just was freaking awesome, right? But that's how code quality works. It's just basically, at the end of the day, I ha I'm the one who lands it. And if I'm going to land it, it needs to be of quality or at least where oftentimes if it's small, I'll take the branch and like, hey, and I'll pull it down. i got to QA it and run it through tests and stuff anyways. And I might just, you know, clean that up, reword that comment, put the period at the end of the comment line, you know. I mean, you got to be willing to kind of meet them halfway sometimes. Um, at the same time, if I made a big change of the code, I would go, hey, you should look at what I, you know, I, I love what you started. I tweaked it a little bit. Here's the, the link to the commit to go see what I changed so that you can kind of learn, you know. And so it's personal preference, right? You know, you don't want your preference to, to shoot down a potential contributor. Um, but You've got a coding style. Do you do, you do right? Yeah, exactly. And, and, what's, and this is what's bad, right? This is for, you know, four years into this project. My standards have changed in four years, right? <laughs> like, you, know, you don't meet your own standards from before. No, no, I totally don't. Right? Like now, if, if you want to land a if you want to land a patch, I want to test for it, you know, and not uh, every line is tested. So, but we're starting now with the automated stuff to go look at getting code coverage tools running on the test suite. So, the guy who's working on the private bookmarks, I told him, I said, well, I just want you to know, like, if you want to do this project, the first thing you're going to do for the first chunk of Google Summer of Code is just write tests. Because you're going to have to make sure that anything that touches querying, searching, loading, filtering a bookmark um, has 100% test coverage so that when we go in and add a private flag, that all the tests <coughs> will break <laughs> because we added this private flag and we will have to add new tests, duplicate every test, say here is the public version and here is the private enabled version, right? Because if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right, very securely, we're not going to leak data. And the only way to promise that is to cover that code in tests, sort of, you know. So and he's excited about it. He's, he's going to learn more about writing unit tests and stuff in this Google Summer Code project than he will in his whole four-year degree at college, mm -hmm. you know. Make and more exactly, and that's what I look at, right? Like, you know, and that's what I love. I'm the one, I'm Bookie is going to get a lot better test coverage. It's going to get an awesome new feature. I'm going to mentor, and, you know, I really enjoy teaching this kind of stuff. And so it's just like a huge win, 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 as long as you're willing to put the time into it. So, well, yeah, and then how much time do you think you're going to have to put into it? So Google Summer of Code says about 10 hours to 20 hours per student per week. So um, it'll be a chunk. I haven't done woodworking since Christmas. Um, <laughs> so, um, but again, it's it's all. I mean, your projects move to the next level, though, too. Yeah, right? And so but what would be really awesome, and what started to happen towards the end of the cycle with this stuff, is some of the guys that had started out early in Google Summer of Code, you know, the, the process of get to know a project, apply to a project, get to know your project, it's gone a couple months now, um, started to sit in IRC and answer questions and help people get started, you know? And like, this could be the springboard to where I don't have to answer every question, or I don't have to review every patch, you know, one day. One day. I have a dream. Someone else will loan the land code for me. <laughs> but we're not there yet. Yeah. If this is Java, why it doesn't work in Windows? It's JavaScript. Oh, um, so because the back end is Python, and it uses a lot of libraries that build C extensions, so they're fast. 
Um, the B-readability library takes HTML and parses it like XML and searches all the nodes and all that. And to make that fast, it needs a C compiled extension, which is hard to do in Windows. And the make file, like make, doesn't run in Windows, I don't think. I think there's ways of you need say, you need SigWin and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. So I mean, could someone make it work in Windows? Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that I'm interested in dealing with. Or or even one guy asked about um, making it work and submitting the documentation for it and stuff. And I said, I gotta be honest, man. I I, I don't want you to waste your time because. Which you, you have to be willing to say no because every patch, every branch, every feature you land and accept, you're now on the hook for maintaining, right? So um, if I accept the whole, because he had to like basically fork off the whole install process and all this stuff to work in Windows, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to maintain it. Like, I mean, it's, it'll get out of date and I'll never know, and someone will have a horrible experience and they'll blame me. So I'm like, you know, at some point I have to just kind of scale back what I'm willing to spend my time on. And Windows support isn't one of those. Well, I think the other thing too is that if uh, if Windows, if someone wants to work around the current framework and get it running under Windows, and there's minimal patches and stuff like you know, if this is Windows, then do this type stuff, and work within the existing framework, I don't think there's any problem with that. It's just again, there's if it's a huge amount of effort and it's separate now from the actual build process. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Windows could be Wookie. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions? Everyone ready to go submit a patch to your, your favorite open source project now? Or at least have pity when they take a while to respond in IRC. Yeah. Or when they don't immediately merge your pull requests, you can go, that's okay. Um, the guys that have really popular like frameworks, that tools I use, SQLchemy, Pyramid, um, the, the, I don't know how you know, that those weeks of the Google Summer of Code influx of six, eight patches and stuff a day and people wanting to questions in IRC constantly, like, like there are projects that live like that and I don't know how in the world they do it. Like, I was like more impressed and more, you know, I'm not worthy of these guys that run these, these big projects. Yeah. Uh, how about a suggestion about the best way to do bug reports? I can I can see myself being really verbose, you know, I got this kind yeah. of processor that's such RAM. Maybe they don't need to know that. Is there like a, a vanilla flavor way to make a bug report so that they they can zoom in on things? Bug reporting is an acquired skill, that's for sure. Um, so as a small upstart project, I don't care. Like, you know what, I work with people. Like they submit a bug report that doesn't have enough info and I'm like, hey. Could you check this and this? Like, I can't duplicate it here. Like, you know, I have to work with them. Well, just like the branches, the land a branch, right? You may get a, you know, a branch that, I don't even know what the hell this is supposed to do. Like, could you, let's, let's start a communication dialogue. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know. I, I would say maybe look at the other kind of bug reports on the project. Those are, you know, what I would look at are ones that have been received well and marked fixed, and then look at ones that have been just like marked as won't fix and see if there's any lessons to learn between them. Um, but I think because uh, I, I work in open source by day, we do stuff with bugs by day, by night, like I eat, sleep, and breathe bugs <coughs> and bug reports and managing them on our work items and the, the Kanban board that I kind of showed in a talk a couple of weeks or a couple months ago. Um, I don't, I'm too close to the problem to give you good suggestions on that. All right. Do you have any questions or anything at all? Um, let me know. We want to start a open source developer support group. <laughs> <laughs> we, call that, we call that coffee up, sir.